Hey, greetings, it's Hog Dog. Hey, today we're in the A10C in Digital Combat Simulator, and what we're going to do uh, is we're going to show you from startup to flying the aircraft to using the weapon systems, uh, and then also, um, and probably more importantly, how to use the HUD to not only uh, navigate but to use your uh, use them in your weapon weapons as well so um here we're going to zoom in uh I'm, I'm way out there's my aircraft uh parked in the hangar you'll notice she's off and uh good indication is that it's not spinning or smoking but the uh canopy is up we'll get in the cockpit and as we do we'll go ahead and turn on the track ir which uh, i have paused right now uh, I do that when I look from the outside of the aircraft because it makes it very inconvenient. But anyway, looking from the inside of the aircraft, um, there's just a few... Th uh, to get this bird started, it's actually fairly simple to do. And there's only a couple panels you have to concern yourself with. The electrical panel over here, and then this panel over here, which is uh, your APU uh, starter, or uh, your APU and your... Uh, here, I'm going to take it off of uh, take off the track IR until we're ready to fly. It makes it difficult to record. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in. This area right here is this is where your APU is, and this is where your fuel flow is. Uh, you're going to want to turn your fuel flow on. You can do that anytime. Well, anytime before you start the engine, you want to turn on your APU. And your APU is not going to actually turn on until you turn on the battery. And then the APU will start. And you can notice over here that the APU uh, indicator, this will tell you when it's at 100% and ready to fire up. While we're waiting for that, you want to turn on your inverter switch. And you also want to turn on your APU generator switch. And then while you're doing that, go ahead and turn on these two switches. That master caution you hear is because um, the APU isn't fully uh, fired up yet. So as soon as it's fully fired up, which a, a few seconds ago it stopped uh, the master caution, uh, that means that the APU is uh, ready to go. You could have uh, uh, quieted the master caution by just pressing the button knowing that that's what it's going to be telling you. But anyway, uh, since we've already turned the fuel on, and the APU is on and running and the uh, inverter switch is on and the APU generator switch is on, we can go ahead and try to start uh, engine one. And we do that with Alt Home. Oops, Alt Home. One more time. Oh, the reason it's not working here is because I didn't have my throttle pulled all the way back on my joystick. You have to pull it all the way back, otherwise it won't even try to engage. So. I pull it back and then alt home and you'll notice that the right uh, throttle kicks out and then you'll notice also over here that uh, the words uh, engine start cycle kick up in the master caution panel up in the upper upper uh, left hand corner uh, while that's going we're going to turn on some systems uh, the two that you need to turn on right away are these two that's your CDU and your um, uh, EGI. If you right click on this knob and point it to you, it is on and in the proper location. Uh, also, while engine one is firing up, you can go ahead and turn on these SAS switches. There's four of them. This is your anti skid. That's your lights. You might need them at night, but not today. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my weapon systems as well. Now, if you look over here on this master caution panel, uh, the light has gone out, which means engine one is fired up and ready to go. So we can go ahead and start initiate engine two, which is control home. And you'll notice that the throttle goes forward just like before. And while we're waiting for that, I will go ahead and, since I turned on these and I uh, got that going and I got my weapon systems up and running or starting, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my displays. You'll notice up here the word canopy unlocked uh, is is um, in yellow letters. 
to, con to shut your canopy, you can control C. It's left control C. You'll we'll see it come in and close. And lock. It gets a little quieter, which is nice. Your head starts popping up. Uh, I turned on those uh, monitors, so now things are starting to pop. I've got my DTS load screen up here, and you'll notice this little white box down here. That is a notification or an error, and you just need to acknowledge the notification by clicking the ACK button down here in the lower right. Uh, sometimes there's more than one, so you have to press it a couple times. Uh, once you do that, um, you'll notice over here that there's no asterisks next to any of these items on the left. Uh, as long as there's no asterisks there, uh, there's nothing to do. So what I did forget to do is turn on these two items. That's your CDU and your um, EGI. So once uh, it takes a few minutes, and once those fire up, then the asterisks will show up. But in the meantime, uh, looking around the cockpit, uh, there's there's a few things that you can be turning on while your uh, engine is spooling up, which it already has. But um, over here, the radios um, work like this. If you turn that one on with a right click, it'll point to you. Point that one up and point that one to you. And uh, those are the three different radios that you have. That is your recorder. Uh, you can right click on this to this button here to lower your seat. This is your ejection. You need to uh, click that on. Uh, this is also uh, this is your countermeasures. You turn on the white knob with a right click and you make sure it's pointing up to auto and then you click these knobs up. Those knobs will turn on your radar um, and your jammer and which you can change to different types of jammers and it doesn't leave it there it's just priority so if you know that you're going into a SAM area uh, earlier we talked about the asterisks not being there on the left there they are now so we're going to go ahead and click load all engine 2 is fired up you can tell because that um, engine start cycle light is out in the upper right so we can now turn off the APU but before we do we have to switch the um, generators over to the internal uh, engine one and engine two generators uh, which you, you have to turn these uh, switches on first before you turn off the APU or you'll have to start the entire electrical process all over again so you don't want to turn off this button or this switch until you turn these two on you don't have to turn them both on one or the other but I turn them both on so that you have a backup you'll notice that the master caution goes off the master caution goes off because the APU is still engaged as the generator. So if we turn off the APU, the master caution goes away, and we can now turn off the APU itself. It gets a little quieter. Now that we're sitting here and um, waiting for, uh, well, we already did the uh, load all, so let's take a look at the CDU that's on the left MFD. I'll zoom in a little bit. If you click CDU, you'll notice that this number is climbing. It is currently T equals 2.3 space 4.08. And as you, if you wait, uh, and well, you need to wait, don't move the aircraft until the navigation is set because if you move the av aircraft, uh, it stops and you 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 have to stop and restart the process. That'll count to 4.0 space 0 0.8 and when it does the word INS ready will start flashing. When it when it starts flashing you're going to click nav. So we'll come back to that in a second because uh, it is currently set at like 2.9 it's got count all the way up to 4.0. So we can talk about other stuff. Over here your TGP uh, is currently off. The reason why it's off is because you don't have one. That is the lightning pod. And t here, let me turn off the radios to avoid that static. I'll turn all three of them off. Okay. Um, the reason you don't have a targeting pod is because you're not equipped with one. 
So let's go ahead and equip ourselves with one. And we do that with backslash. Over here you'll see the inner phone, which currently shows you trying to communicate with the tower. You want to hit F11 for parent menu, and then the F8 for ground crew, and then F1 for loadout. The lightning has to be loaded in either spots 10 or 2. So I'll go ahead and load it over here on 10. It's under pods, and it's lightning. And that is your targeting pod. While we're in here, I'll go ahead and put a couple of aims on the aircraft. And I'm going to increase the missiles um, to 3 instead of 2. Mavericks. Now you notice I'm overweight over here. Uh, I'm going to explain, uh, change it to high explosive ammo too. I'm going to go ahead and reduce a little fuel until my weight is below my maximum weight. I'm going to go a little more than that. We've got plenty of fuel. And you actually should do that right away because that, uh, while they're doing that, uh, you you know you could be going through the startup procedure in your aircraft. Um, you, uh, getting back to that screen that we were talking about a minute ago, T now equals 4.0.0.8, and INS Nav Ready is is flashing, so I'm going to click the Nav button right here. When I do that, then I can click this EGI button in the center right above, right in front of your uh, uh, joystick. And then um, the very final thing that you need to do is there's a hidden button back here called the EAC button. It's right in the middle of your throttle and uh, above that, I guess, round thing on the side. And the, you click it to turn it on and the uh, only thing I'm missing and yeah, let me look at the uh, master caution panel is uh, the C cast which checking oh let me turn this off yeah, that, we turn this off because the TGP uh, is uh, currently um, not on the aircraft. They're loading it. It's probably there now. Uh, but to turn to get it to function, you have to turn it off. And now they've told me my rearming is complete. And then turn it back on. And then it'll say not timed out. Uh, it'll say not timed out for a minute and 40 seconds uh, while it gets aligned and, and hot. In the meantime... Um, we need, because now we've reloaded, uh, we've changed our ammo, we need to tell the computer uh, which, uh, or to match the ammo to the screen that you have in front of you. So you click the stat button, actually you click and hold the stat button, and display program will come up and you click load off to the left, or to the right, and then you click stat again, and it'll move load down into the stat area and stats no longer there so then you click load and then over on the left is load DMS or DSMS you want to load the DSMS because that will then match your uh, uh, MFD display to the weapons that you ask it to change to you'll notice that the asterisks go away and then they come back um, when they do your DSMS is properly updated and now matches what you've asked it to put on the aircraft you can see I have now three and three Mavericks rather than two and two, which was originally on, on the aircraft. Anyway, um, I'm also going to roll this down, just notch at a time until that red thing disappears. Uh, I, I believe that's to make sure that you've looked at it, to make sure that you've set it properly, uh, that it puts an error up there. But anyway, um, the very last thing you need to do, and I keep saying this, is you need to turn your nose wheel steering on. Because if you don't, you won't be able to taxi very well. And that is the insert button. When you hit the insert button, you'll notice that this blue little uh, indicator comes on, say steering engaged. And that means that you, now when you roll forward, your nose wheel steering is um, good to go. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and start the process of aligning my Mavericks to the gyroscope. Um, I do that by clicking the map. Oh, here, let's go zoom in a little bit. 
by clicking this MAV button down here and you'll notice it says off so um, what I'm going to do is cl uh, click the word off over here in the upper right and it'll say align and it'll take three minutes for that to align and you'll notice it's been running for eight seconds um, so you, after three minutes that'll pop in that'll pop in for you uh, what I do, one other thing that I like to do is change my slew rate because I think it slews too fast. So I change it to 3 instead of 5. It's currently set at 5. All I have to do is click the 3, which was the number up here, and then come down here and click slew. If it doesn't change, if it stays at 5.0 after you've uh, selected 3 and then click slew, it's because it's uh, confused. And to unconfuse it, just click the clear button, then 3, then slew again. Um, so mine is currently set to 3.0, my slew is. You can see that over there. And um, everything's good to go on my Mavericks. They're warming up. My TGP is now hot, and I can change it to air to ground or air to air. I'd prefer air to ground because I think that's what we're going after. And that's the screen that we're uh, gonna. I'm going to leave up. I'm going to leave the TGP screen up. Now you'll notice the word not soy, that is not screen of interest. It is here and here on both MFDs. And that's because currently the screen of interest is your HUD, which we'll talk about when we get in the air because a lot of the stuff that appears in your HUD doesn't appear until after you've left the ground. So to make a screen screen of interest, all you have to do is select it twice. For example, if for the, currently I have the TGP selected, and you can tell because it's highlighted right here. So if I click it again, it now puts a green box around here, and it no longer says not soy. Now, what that means is if I move my uh, targeting camera, now you'll see that the uh, screen changes. Here I am moving up and down, and left and right. And I can zoom in on stuff, and you know that's me sitting on the ground, and I can uh, then target stuff from the ground if I wanted to. But anyway, you don't normally do that on the ground, so um, I'll go ahead and center that. You center any device that is currently active as soy by pressing C. But uh, anyway, so uh, now that we're rolling, everything's good to go. All our stuff is on. Uh, I didn't turn on any lights. You really don't want lights in, while you're up in the air battling. I'm going to go ahead and push the throttle a little bit. Get her rolling out there. I'll zoom it back a little bit. Oh, we need to turn our track IR back on because we're ready to fly. Notice a couple of different uh, new um, targeting reticles on, up up on the HUD. This one over here to the right. Uh, this one over here to the right is for your Mavericks. That's the screen you see down here uh, on the on the right. That's a taxiway. Nobody's coming, so we'll go ahead and pass through for the runway. Looks like we're entering midfield, which is all right. I think I got confidence enough that I can get the bird off the ground. Of course, I can't tell which way is longer. Runway three two one four. All right, we'll go down a little bit before we and turn around before we take off.
that little chirping you hear is me picking up some radar. Uh, you can see it on this little round screen down here. It uh, says E3. It's a friendly, so I'm not too worried about it. I think we've gone down far enough. Let's go ahead and uh, spin her around. Slow her down before we start to turn. And give her a little gas halfway through. Then lay it off. And... Now before we roll out, uh, one thing you want to do is turn off your nose wheel steering. Because when it's on and you hit that throttle like I'm about to, your nose will go all over the place if you don't uh, turn off your nose wheel steering. It can be really hard to control. Uh, she's getting up to about 110. I could probably take off at any point, but I'm going to let myself roll a little longer to pick up some speed. It helps with the climb out. Okay, as I'm climbing out, oh, I didn't lift my gear. Hit my wife had to holler at me. Um, let me hit G. You'll notice that uh, the handle comes up and turns red. You're getting a master caution, but you know the caution light, it's because the handle is red and it's showing you what's the problem. It's not really a problem, it's just telling you the gear is lifting. Well, we're here, if you look at the flap switch, uh, or the flap indicator, uh, it, the flaps are already all the way up. So we don't have to worry about that. And the flap indicator is down here in the corner, right next to your gear switch. The flap indicator is currently at zero, pointing that way. Here we are in the air. Um, you'll notice a whole bunch of new, um, well, not a whole bunch of, but uh, new um, targeting reticles. There's one two, three, four, five of them. And it's because uh, we're, we have different weapons selected, currently no weapons selected. Let's go ahead and switch to the uh, uh, Mavericks by selecting them in the DSMS page. Uh, oh, while we're in here, uh, let's go ahead and set our Mavericks up properly. Most people don't do a lot of setup for their Mavericks. They just choose them and fire them. <coughs> To set them up properly, you click the profile. After you click DSMS, you click profile. If it's set to MAV over here on the side already, then um, go ahead and click mode CCI, uh, CCIP over here and change it to mode CCRP, then click save. That's all you really need to do to set up your Mavericks. Um, the difference being the intelligence of the Maverick and how well it tracks. You can also make the same changes for any other weapons that you have. For example, the GBU-12s or GBU-10s. Um, well, actually, any of your bombs or missiles can be set to CCRP mode. Uh, well, I say any. You'll figure that piece out. It's not uh, not important to know which ones do and which ones don't. But but anyway. Some do, and you, by setting them to CCRP mode, they're more intelligent. So going back to the TGP screen, uh, you'll notice it's not soy anymore, so I'll click it again, and now it's screen of interest. And over here we have the uh, MAV, the Maverick cam, the Maverick camera, the camera that's in the nose of the next Maverick that's going to fire. Now, the, this icon appears here on the HUD, uh, as this round um, reticle with uh, crosshairs and a dot in the middle. Uh, this one is a small dot. That's this one here, this little tiny one at the bottom. Now, I already centered that earlier by pressing C, which is why it kind of holds in the position of directly in front of me. 
uh, and that's kind of where I want it to be. Um, I think I missed my turn, by the way. We should take a look at our tad. Yeah, I'm sure I missed my turn. So let's zoom out and take a look at our... Yeah, I need a turn. This indicator right here will tell me which direction to go, and I need just to follow that arrow, basically. I need to turn around. Too much talking, not enough paying attention to our uh, waypoint. Oh, a little too much turn. That's why I'm getting that warning. Beautiful lake. Almost there. That's again this little indicator right here, and it's an arrow pointing away from me. There's a flat end on the other side. You may not be able to tell that from the video. Uh, as we turn to that point, you'll notice that a new reticle pops up. It is square, and it has a line off of it. That is the waypoint that we just changed to. And the reason it has a line off of it is because it is currently what is what is known as SPI. Um, and basically SPI is, um, works like this. If I wanted to slave all of my sensors to SPI, I would press and hold V. When I do, you'll notice that all of, all of my uh, reticles, except that one, uh, go down to where the square box was. And now they're kind of locked on it. Well, that's because my Maverick camera is now locked on SPI, and so is my targeting camera, my TGP camera. Now, you'll notice it still has soy, even though I've changed screens. Well, that, that's because I didn't assign a screen of interest to anything else, uh, so it kept it. So I can now move that around if I want. I can move it off that point. And you'll notice that that little round uh, reticle in the HUD moves off of the square and the big indicator from the MAV camera. I can move that around. I can point it at stuff. And more importantly, uh, I could I could do I can search with it. I can. Uh, in fact, let's let's turn off the track IR for a second. It's easier to see when I'm not moving my head around. Um, you'll notice on the left camera that there's uh, some stuff there. Um, hard to see because, well, it's daytime. And that stuff is in the day. So I'll turn the screen black by pressing control left arrow. I can zoom. Uh, it's, it's, it's currently a screen of interest, so um, I now have control of it. And I can zoom in and out with home and end keys. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of stuff down there. Here, let's zoom in again with V. You'll notice that there's some trucks. Currently says area mode right down here. Press control up and it'll say point. And as you move it around now, it will lock onto targets all by itself. As it does that, if I want my Maverick to point to that item, all I have to do is I have to do two things. I have to make uh, the TGP the SPI, and then I just, uh, well, actually, that's all I have to do. I do that by pressing Control Up and holding it. Now you notice that the Maverick camera, the big round one that I talked about with the targeting reticle and, and all that, now just automatically instantly goes down to whatever I now call SPI. So that is currently set to that, um, oops, let me zoom out a little bit. The left screen is currently on that target, so is the right one, and so is, you know, so right here you can see all three of them are. If I want to fire on that target, I have to make this screen in interest by pressing and holding K or clicking the MAV again. I can try to fire, but it says no track fire launch. Well, that's because you haven't stabilized it. Press the little up arrow or up uh, semicolon key just briefly. 
it'll recatch the item and then you when you fire you will have destroyed the item so uh, that's the that's the maverick I fired two of them just for effect um, now as I'm flying along uh, to, to effectively use these mavericks um, you need to be able to search with them again we're heading for the square box over here which is our waypoint that little square box on your HUD is the waypoint anytime you see it it indicates your next waypoint if I change my waypoint you'll notice it disappears or it moves over if I change it back it goes back over here change it forward goes over there there's your box it's not currently speed because it doesn't have a line off of it currently speed is still your TGP now I, I I've made this now screen of interest by double clicking the TGP down here on the left and then I'm going to center the reticle it loses speed the second you center it why well I don't know why but it does you'll notice that the line is now off of the box instead of off of your uh, little indicator that you have for your targeting in a uh, reticle but to make it um, speed control up and hold it until a little line pops up uh, off the side of that little round reticle and then if I want to slave my Mavericks to it I press and hold V and it'll automatically slew to that location my uh, the center of my now if I move that around and I'm doing a search if I'm searching through the hills for a target for example I'm, I'm not only searching with my targeting reticle I'm also searching with the Maverick the Maverick will follow the TGP no matter where you put it very handy if you're looking for targets as soon as you find them the Maverick is already targeted on them and ready to fire well not ready to fire you have to switch to it and then ground stabilize with um, the semicolon uh, period comma and bracket keys you ground stabilize by just moving it by just a hair you just want to move it as little as possible and then it'll resnap back to that point and it just that when I say ground stabilize what that means is it, it needs to know that it's not pointing to the ground even th though you've locked onto it via the TGP uh, that doesn't the Maverick doesn't feel comfortable knowing that you know you haven't at least you know tried to you know verify that it's not locked onto the ground and that's what ground stabilize means so here I am flying along I'm moving that reticle let's recenter it and you'll notice again when I center it this reticle pops up but now the Maverick instantly goes to the waypoint that little box and that's because I lose the speed and the speed goes instantly to the waypoint that you currently have selected whenever whatever you have currently focused as speed loses it and I say whatever you have focused because you can also go over to your TAD which is your moving map and you can make it spee as well there's a little little crosshair right there and as you move it around it uh, it can be you can use that to target your um, Mavericks or anything else and you can do that by pressing control up as long as it's screen of interest and now this little triangle is where the uh, Maverick will point if you press and hold V actually you have to set it to an to an object but anyway uh, I don't normally you don't normally do it that way you normally you do it with the TGP set on air to ground currently active I'm going to center it it's now centered but I don't have speed so I don't have the Mavericks to make it speed control up and hold it until the little line appears off the side of it 
Now that it does, the Maverick, which was already set to go to whatever is SPI, automatically tracks to that, to that place. So now you've got the larger reticle here. Now let's say I'm flying and I'm wondering where my nav point is. If I want to know where my nav point is, uh, and I don't want to go looking around, I can easily just press uh, C, uh, as long as I have my TGP as, as screen of interest, I press C and it'll center it. Well, you notice that the Maverick um, indicator went down and to the left. I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, SPI again. It'll come back up. And as it does, the direction that it comes from from the window is the direction that I need to turn to to go to my nav point. And I can just turn that way until I see the square box. Or I can press Charlie again, C. And you'll notice over here that there is uh, an indicator off to the side telling me to keep turn. Oh, there it goes. When it stopped, now that is my current um, heading for my waypoint. So I can use the targeting pod to not only seek uh, enemies, but to tell me which direction to turn uh, without having to go look at all my instruments and all that stuff uh, to my next waypoint. So, and I use it for that quite a bit. So now that I know where my waypoint's at, I can t put it back on my targeting, uh, my TGP, by pressing Control Up and holding it. Bada boom, bada bing, it automatically slides down to where my TGP's at, which is currently centered and will stay there until I move it. So now um, I'm not too afraid of any enemies. Although I should turn on uh, labels, it does make it easier. If I wanted to seek, uh, at any point when I start moving the TGP, it will uh, it will no longer be centered no matter which direction I look. Now it's kind of locked into that position. So as I move it around, also I have it zoomed in quite a ways. You notice that the two screens move again. They move together. That's because I have the TGP and the Mavericks locked together. And this is how I like to seek for targets. Let's say you found... I think we're near a town over here, so let's uh, see if we can maybe attack a building. I do have a building. Change it to point mode. It picked up on a building. It's already speed. So now I'm going to switch over to the Mavericks. By pressing and holding K. Or double click the Maverick. I'm going to ground stabilize. I don't think I'm on the target. I don't think I think we're too far away yet anyway. Oh, there we go. No, didn't pick it up. So it should end up right in the middle of that target. Oh, hey, there's an air target. And we'll go take him out in just a second. It's picking up multiple targets. I'll go ahead and fire one. There's a Maverick on its way. Now, if I want to use the Maverick screen as my, t as my screen of interest, which is not a bad way to go, especially air-to-air, -air, since it's already screen of interest, if I press C, now just my Maverick um, indicator is... Um, at the center. No longer is my TGP. My TGP is still pointing at whatever it was pointing at, which is kind of uh, handy, especially air-to-air -air using your Mavericks. Because now I can zoom that and it will automatically grab a target, including air targets, when they come in range.
or I can switch to the aim which is a better idea air to air because that's what they're for it's alright though we'll uh, go ahead and head that direction should probably turn on the track IR again You can zoom the uh, Maverick screen in and out with uh, the V key uh, one time. It's like one notch one way and back to normal or whatever. One level of zoom in. Oop, he looks like he has fired an object. Let's switch to the Mavericks or to the uh, Ames. I've switched the aims by pressing and holding M. Now you'll notice the circle in the center of the screen with the dot in the middle. That is your, now your targeting reticle. You need to make the HUD your screen of interest by pressing U so that you can move that targeting reticle. It's just a big round circle. You don't want to move it until you're ready. Press C again to center it because otherwise it floats around. It's really irritating. Oh, there's a number of aircraft or whatever engaged in battle with this guy. Ground stuff. I guess they got him. Yep, he's dead. So, you know, from, we'll go back to our Mavericks. And I'm going to switch back to the TGP screen, make it screen of interest. I'm going to center it. You'll notice that that little deal goes around and then centers. That's right here. I'm going to put that somewhere on that red target or near it. And when I get it near it, then I'm going to move it off of center so that I can don't have to hold the pos position. Might have another air target. Looks like it. I'm gonna go air to air. I say that because I was trying to catch him with the uh, targeting pod, and he was moving so fast that I couldn't target him. So he must be an aircraft. No ground a piece of ground equipment would move that fast. I'm guessing there's a helicopter at that altitude or a P-51. Wait till we get in a little closer, and then we'll bring the targeting reticle again. Press M and hold M to switch to your um, air-to-air -air stuff if you have them. If you don't have any aims, you're screwed. Well, not screwed. You could use Mavericks. Now, you, what you could do, yeah, it is a helicopter. It's an MI-24. You can put him in that circle, and you'll hear him start to buzz. And as soon as he starts to buzz, you're kind of in range. Then kind of bring that circle off the of center with your directional keys. Oh, he went behind the building, or uh, mountain. Let's go ahead and climb.
t I, I couldn't get my targeting reticle to, uh, I was put my hand on the wrong spot. He shot me pretty good, actually. Those warnings can be cleared with the act button. Got that one. Ooh. I shot both of my aims, so I'm kind of out of those. But anyway, that's how the uh, A10C works in DCS. You know, if you have any questions, you can join us over at msflights.net. Um, I'm usually there. We're playing DCS. Uh, there's usually lots of questions answered, uh, asked. Um, come on by and see us, and we'll be happy to fly with you. Thanks for watching.